So I wanted to do a walkthrough on the Ford GAT truck uh, that we use in the 353rd is uh, one of several vehicles that we have. Uh, the GAT is interesting in that it has uh, headlights within the fenders, which is very unusual for a 1940s vehicle. But this is a modern design uh, that was just coming out in 1941 and 42 at the latest production model trucks and uh, cars. Uh, this model uh, came out in 1941 uh, for production for the 1942 production year. Uh, but uh, while these things were just starting to roll off the assembly line, uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed. Because they were already in production uh, and agriculture was considered a critical war industry, these continue to be produced throughout the duration of the war uh, for agricultural use and also other critical war industries. The U.S. military also purchased these and they used them uh, for tow trucks, transport trucks, fire trucks on bases within the U.S. When the Russians needed additional vehicles, they were able to churn out uh, surpluses of these. They would break them down into components and crates so they could ship more of them in uh, ships and then they would send them to Russia where they were assembled and used in great numbers, several thousand, uh, for uh, transport of the Russian army. Uh, the vehicle that you see is uh, still in the uh, U.S. configuration. Uh, it has a 353rd emblem for the divisional markings. It has a tow chain on the front so it could be towed out of uh, holes or uh, mud on the Russian front. It has a Wehrmacht license plate uh, for Wehrmacht here, and it has the identification number. It looks like a homemade plate because it is. Uh, they originally stamped plates, but the, once the war started, it was just easier to paint them, and they would usually overmark them with stamps from the local Felgendarmerie, the field police, to show that it's been properly recorded. There's a horseshoe on the front. Uh, one of the reasons uh, we always joke that the Germans lost the war is because their horseshoes were always upside down. But uh, the thought in Europe is that uh, you would have the upside down horseshoe so the good luck can rain out onto your vehicle. This is for a mobile infantry unit uh, with the tactical markings. And then if you take a look at this, uh, this is a U.S. blackout light uh, that was issued on Jeeps and other military vehicles. But in this case, it was issued on these vehicles that went to Russia. And uh, you could turn out the headlights and you could just turn on the blackout light, which is almost like shining a flashlight in your hand so you get a little bit of glow. So enemy aircraft or people way off in the distance don't see a direct light source. But you can drive very slow on the roads uh, using this headlight system. The Germans usually marked their vehicles with uh, ATUs for atmospheres, uh, for the tire pressure, so they knew exactly what uh, needed to go in there for maintenance. They also had door load labels. Uh, the Balkan Kreitz, as you usually see in uh, war movies, is a, is a Hollywoodism, whereas uh, this is a little bit more accurate. They would have load labels to identify uh, loading of train cars and also for uh, bridges and what the load limits are to know whether you need to unload the truck or whether you can drive over a bridge uh, that was temporary. There's a toolbox in the bottom. The truck has engineer tools that are installed on it. And on the back, there's a rear license plate, the divisional emblem. And on the other side, <coughs> there is the uh, mobile infantry unit for the 2nd Battalion, 941st Infantry Regiment, so you know uh, where this vehicle came from. There is also a Ford Dual Light in the back, and then uh, they have a, uh, <clears throat> a mount for uh, towing uh, light cargo. The reason for this cutout in German trucks is because of where the trailer hitch goes. There it is. And on the side, off to the, <laughs> off to the side here, we have extra fuel cans uh, to fuel up the vehicle. What's interesting about this truck is that uh, a lot of people associate this with uh, the late 40s uh, because indeed this truck was still in production at the end of the war so uh, they modified it slightly and in 1947 they went into full civilian production with this vehicle as the 1947 production model even though it was only a slight modification from 1941. Thank you.